Welcome to a lesson on determining slant asymptotes of a rational function. This video does assume that you've already watched the video on vertical and horizontal asymptotes of rational functions. The goals of this video are to determine the slant asymptotes of a rational function and then graph a rational function. Here we see a graph of a rational function that has a slant asymptote as we see here. A slant asymptote is just like a vertical or horizontal asymptote where it's a line that the graph approaches but instead of being a vertical or horizontal line, it's a slanted line. So let's take a look at how we can determine when a rational function has a slant asymptote and then how to determine it. Slant asymptotes, sometimes called oblique asymptotes, are lines the graph approaches. A graph has a slant asymptote if the degree of the numerator is one degree higher than the degree of the denominator. So if it satisfies this condition, to find the slant asymptote, we'll divide the numerator by the denominator and then determine what line the graph approaches as x approaches positive or negative infinity. And what we'll find is the equation of the line will be from only the quotient part of our answer, meaning we can disregard the remainder part of our answer. Let's look at an example. Here we want to determine all of the asymptotes and then graph the function. So the first step in all these types of problems is to first factor the given function. So our numerator is a difference of squares. Our denominator has a common factor of two. Notice there's only one zero of the denominator and it's not a zero of the numerator. So we do have a vertical asymptote at x equals two. Let's go ahead and sketch that. Next, for the horizontal asymptotes, since the degree of the numerator is equal to two and the degree of the denominator is equal to one, the numerator has a higher degree and, and therefore there is no horizontal asymptote. The reason for this is if we analyze this as x approaches positive infinity, the numerator increases faster than the denominator. But since the degree of the numerator is one degree higher than that of the denominator, we do have a slant asymptote so we have to take x squared minus one and divide by two x minus four. So let's go ahead and perform long division here. We'll have x squared. Now we need our terms in descending order, so we're gonna put in a zero x term. And we'll divide this by two x minus four. And now we have to ask ourselves, what times two x would equal x squared? And that would be one half x. One half x times two x would give us x squared. One half x times a negative four would be minus two x. And we're subtracting here, but we normally add the opposite instead. So we change this to addition, change this to a negative, change this to plus. The next term would be two x, bring down the minus one. What times two x would give us two x? That would be a positive one. One times two x minus four is two x minus four. Be careful here, we're subtracting. So we'll add the opposite instead. We have a remainder of three. So what we'd normally do now is put plus three all over two x minus four. So this tells us that we can rewrite the given function as one half x plus one plus three over two x minus four. But if we take a look at what happens to this function as x approaches, let's say, positive infinity, the fraction part of this quotient is going to approach zero. So the remaining part tells us the equation of our slant asymptote. Our slant asymptote will be y equals one half x plus one. Let's go ahead and graph that. Y-intercept of positive one, slope of one half, up one right two. And now to make a nice graph of this function, we just need to select a few points near the vertical asymptote. So we let x equal three and x equals one, that might be enough information. When x is equal to three, we're gonna have nine minus one, that's eight divided by six minus four, that's two. Eight divided by two would equal four. When x is equal to one, we'd have zero. So we have the point three, four 
here and the point one zero. And because we know it approaches the asymptotes, this is enough information to make a nice graph. And here's the graph using some software. And you can see our sketch is pretty good. Again, we could also sketch in our vertical asymptote here. Let's take a look at one more example. Again, our first step is going to be to factor both the numerator and denominator. Notice our numerator has a common factor of x. Then this trinomial factors again, so we'd have x times the quantity x minus two times the quantity x plus one. Already down there would be x times x minus one. So one thing we should notice right away is that there's a common factor here of x. So this can simplify out, but since x equals zero is a zero of both the numerator and denominator, we have a whole at x equals zero. Let's go ahead and write that down. And the other zero of the denominator, x equals one, would be a vertical asymptote. And then for the horizontal asymptote, since the degree of the numerator is equal to three, the degree of the denominator is equal to two, there is no horizontal asymptote. However, since the degree of the numerator is one degree higher than the denominator, we do have a slant asymptote. So now we do have to perform long division to determine the equation of the slant asymptote. We do have to divide the numerator by the denominator. To set up the division, we could either use the original function form or we could use the function after we simplified out the common factor because we already noted that we have to have a whole at x equals zero. What I mean by that is instead of using this form for long division, once we simplify out the common factor of x, we could perform long division in this form and that would be a little bit easier, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna take x squared minus x minus two and divide by x minus one. So what times x would give us x squared? Well, that would be x. We're gonna multiply, it'd be x squared minus x. Then we're gonna subtract by adding the opposite. So that would be zero, bring down the minus two. And this would be the remainder, so we're gonna have x minus two all over x minus one. But once again, as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, this fraction here is going to approach zero. So the equation of the slant asymptote is just going to be y equals x. Now let's go ahead and graph our asymptotes. We have y equals x as our slant asymptote. And we have x equals one as our vertical asymptote. Now let's go and select a couple points to make a nice graph. And again, it's helpful to pick values of x that are near the vertical asymptote. So we'll select x equals two. And we can select x equals zero as long as we use the simplified form of the function because remember there is a hole there. So let's go ahead and do that. So if x is equal to two, we would have two minus two, that's gonna be zero. And when x is equal to zero, we're gonna have negative two over negative one, that's gonna be positive two. But remember, that's actually a hole in the function. So if we plot the point two, zero, we'd be here. If we plot the point zero, two, we'd be here. But because it's a hole, we'll make an open circle here, or an open point. And again, we know the function will be approaching our asymptotes, so we can sketch a nice graph, look something like this and this piece would look something like this. Let's take a look at this with some software. And what you'll notice with a lot of software is because the screen does not have enough definition, you can't see the holes in the function. So if you're checking these on your graphing calculator, that's good, but make sure that you look at the table to identify where the holes should occur. We should have a hole right here when x is equal to zero. And that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found this helpful.